stranger things have happened. Yes, they have. Nothing shocks me about this game. And that drew rim. It's still loose. Luka got it back. Hit down. We just witnessed something special from Luka Doncic. To miss the free throw intentionally, get the offensive rebound, send it to overtime, and cap it all off with a 60-point, 21-rebound, 10-assist triple-double. The first in NBA history. After two made free throws from Miles McBride, the Knicks went up nine with 33 seconds left. In the past 20 seasons, there have literally been zero teams to come back from this deficit and win the game. It all got started off with a Christian Wood three-pointer with a lazy closeout and no contest, with the Knicks thinking that the game was over. After the make, the Mavericks press and Luka forces the jump ball. You can see here tie him up the ball with the left hand and not fouling. Luka then wins the jump ball against Quentin Grimes, hits Tim Hardaway Jr. who fires up a heave three, ends up missing, but Luka crashes, gets pushed in the back in the air, gets fouled, makes the layup, and then goes to the free throw line and sinks the free throw, down three. Knicks now call a timeout up three with 15.4 seconds left. The Knicks get the ball to Julius Randle, who on the season is shooting 79% from the free throw line. And clearly, the Mavericks don't want to foul him in this scenario. So when he gives the ball up and the ball gets swung to Miles McBride, they foul him immediately. He's shooting 80% and actually did well this game shooting. But the idea is to make a player who only shot nine free throws up until this game make them beat you. He ends up missing the first free throw, making the second free throw, putting the Knicks up four. In the ensuing huddle, Jason Kidd drew up a play where they had some initial action, maybe looking for a flare screen here for Hardaway Jr., but then Dinwiddie gets the ball and then fakes a handoff to Luka. This created some confusion and got the open three. Normally in this scenario, teams switch all these actions, so here Grimes should take Dinwiddie, and then McBride just switches on to Luka. So when Dinwiddie fakes his handoff here, it forces McBride to go underneath and allows Dinwiddie to get a clean look from three. The Knicks take their last time out with both teams out of timeouts now. The ball gets inbounded to McBride and he goes to the free throw line again. Here you can see Thibodeau telling his players that we want to foul up three. So only in this scenario you want to foul if you're up three. McBride knocks down both of them. The ball gets inbounded to Luka with seven seconds left. Grimes does a good job of fouling right as he goes across half court with about four seconds left putting Luka on the free throw line. Luka knocks down the first free throw, then after he makes it, turns to his bench and basically acknowledges, yeah, we want to miss a second one. They sub in JaVale McGee for rebounding purposes, and this is where all the chaos happens with Luka perfectly missing it intentionally. Brimes and McBride can't corral the rebound. Luka grabs it and throws it up and finishes the play. Insane free throw miss, insane make on the offensive rebound from Luka. The heave goes wide for the Knicks, and it goes to overtime with Luka sitting on 53 points. Absolutely ridiculous. Luca misses this perfectly off the back of the rim, and here you can see Grimes and McBride both should have had it. Luca corrals it and ends up throwing it in. Absolutely incredible. To start overtime, it was pretty much the same. Back down Grimes. Randall helps here off of Christian Wood. Luca gets good weak side offensive rebounding position, sells the pump fake, and draws the foul. The Mavericks then did what the 76ers did, which is put Julius Randle in ball screen defense. The corner help from McBride comes here as a swipe happens. Luka rips through it and then goes up drawing the foul, going to the free throw line again. The Mavericks added a ram screen or just a down screen for the player setting the ball screen. Just complicates the ball screen coverage a little bit more. They end up switching Randall here with Grimes. Now Luca gets Randall isolated one on one. I think Randall does a good job holding up here, but Luca just is too tough with this nasty turnaround fadeaway. Hits the pull up to put the Mavericks up five. Coming down the other way, they use ball screen action with Julius Randall. Dinwiddie switches here and then fronts. I like what Quickly does here as he sees the front from Dinwiddie. He drives the front, meaning there'd be no help or using Randall as another screener. Leads to a couple offensive rebounds and then Knicks pull it back within three. Same action here, hunting Julius Randle. Put Randle in ball screen action, get the switch. I personally don't like this call, but Luka does a good job attacking the lead leg. As Randle reaches in, refs are prone to call this foul. I didn't agree with it, but you can't give the ref a reason to call a foul here, and Randle sends Luka to the free throw line. Luka knocks down both free throws with 34 seconds left. This is an interesting time for the Knicks. 
you might see coaches often call a timeout here down five with 34 seconds left. The Knicks did have one, but instead they don't even go for a two for one action or any sort of quick hitting action. No real plan, quickly just drives around. McBride drives, misses a really rush floater, and then the Mavericks get the ball back with 20 seconds left, and then the Knicks proceed to basically just kind of give up. Randall's confused what he's doing. He stands there, the ball gets moved past half court, and eventually the foul is committed. But it's just too little too late. At this point, the game's over. Luka checks out with 60 points with eight and a half seconds left. The Knicks get one more basket to make it 126 to 121 on this little drop-off dunk here. And that caps off Luka's absolutely incredible night and one of the best comebacks you'll ever see and I've ever witnessed in NBA history. Uh, just absolutely incredible. 60 points, 20 rebounds, 10 assists. First player in NBA history with a triple-double. 60 point, 20 rebounds. I, there's not enough words to talk about how incredible this is from Luca and how much fun it was to watch this and just enjoy every moment of it. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you do, please feel free to subscribe and support on Substack. Thanks.